Well, good Saturday morning to you. Welcome to Coach's Corner. Live from Hardy's here this morning and uh, busy place this morning. Very busy. Everybody must be out and about trying to get out and uh, maybe warm the weather up a little bit. A little chilly out there if you haven't uh, stepped outside yet this morning. But uh, boy, what a busy Friday we had and what a, uh, the, just some great stories from last night. So bear with me as I come through with all the, all the sports from last night. Uh, it, was a, it was a great uh, day for uh, Bronco Sports, uh, the Twins, and uh, amongst other things. Uh, I had a hard time deciding where to start this morning, so I'll just start where I started typing this morning. And uh, the Bronco track and field teams had their final regular season meet uh, in Hibbing yesterday. Both teams had limited entries, I'll say, in the running events, uh, but the field events were pretty full. Emma Gilbert was a double winner in the shot put and discus, uh, which has come become pretty common uh, for the junior. However, her toss in the shot put was anything but common. She broke her own school record by nearly three feet last night as she set the new school mark at 46 feet, four and a half inches. Old mark, 43.5. Two feet, 11 and a half inches better at 46 feet, four and a half inches. Just a junior. Congratulations, uh, Emma. It uh, is absolutely uh, phenomenal. It's going to be great to see where things uh, continue to go on. Broncos had other very good top finishes yesterday. Lexi Edwards first and Claire Herzig second in the pole vault. Wyatt Omdahl, I believe a personal best, if I'm not mistaken, goes 12-9 in the pole vault yesterday. He takes first place. Paige Wold goes 4-10 in the high jump. She takes second place. Jenna Sullivan took second in the discus and Taylor Bush took third so the Bronco field events did very very well yesterday at the final meet their subsection meet now starts Wednesday uh, in hitting uh, on uh, at about 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning <coughs> excuse me and uh, of course uh, we'll keep everything up to date as much as we can uh, along with that the Bronco softball team completed their regular season with an 11 nothing win over Northwoods yesterday Mariah, Mariah Leahy excuse me improved her record in the pitching circle to 11 and 0 on the season she allowed just one hit struck out six Amber T Lander Casey Myers Sarah Caulfield and Janet Humbert each had a pair of hits for the Broncos in the win the Broncos finished the regular season with a very, very nice 13-2 record and we'll wait until tomorrow. I know earlier in the week I had said it was going to become official, the QRF this morning, but they changed it yesterday, uh, or excuse me, on Thursday. Uh, the QRF actually will become official tomorrow morning. And it looks like if things stay the same, and I think they should, I, I don't see it changing a whole lot because Virginia beat Eveleth Gilbert yesterday 11-1. to uh, I, I think the Broncos will be the number two seed. Uh, I just don't see that changing. And head coach Kevin Gordon and a couple players will be here uh, in our third segment right around 9.30, and uh, we'll see what they think if uh, they agree with what I have to say on that. Bronco Girls Golf yesterday, they uh, completed the regular season championship in the East Range Conference. Uh, they won the tournament, uh, the conference tournament on Wednesday. They complete the regular season title yesterday as they win with a score of 177 up in Ely. They were supposed to be in Duluth yesterday. Things got changed. Uh, as I mentioned, the Broncos shoot 176. Eveleth goes 186. Northwoods was third at 194. Uh, in the individuals, Morgan Rasmussen and Olivia Besch tied for second with 43s. Olivia Wright shoots a 45. Maggie Roeder a 46 for the Broncos as they won that meet, uh, the nine-hole meet with a score of 177. The boys' uh, golf team was down in Virginia, and uh, they end up taking sixth place. Hermantown wins it with 297. Grand Rapids, 303. The Falls comes in sixth with a score of 324. Brady Wright shoots a 72, which was good enough to be tied for fifth. The uh, winner shot a 67 as Brady Wright shot that 72. Other scores for the Broncos, Josh Cannon, 81. Mitchell Nemec, an 84. <clears throat> Excuse me, Josh Millett an 87, Gus Lawrenson a 90, and Sammy Maxwell a 93. This past week's uh, trap results were uh, sent to me this morning. Brady Matthews, 48 out of 50. What a nice uh, week for him. Gage Bergstrom, a 45. Reed Hansen and Cole Mann tied at 44. And Darius Voller at a 43. They'll be in Bemidji today to take part in the Lumberjack Invitational. Rainy River Baseball continued play in the Region 13 tournament being played in St. Cloud yesterday. Tournament's been sort of delayed by rain a little bit, pushed back. Uh, they've been working through the raindrops. Uh, uh, I know people, I, I keep... Everybody keeps saying it's so wet, it's so wet. Well, obviously we haven't seen much rain over the last uh, few days, but the uh, southern part of the state and uh, down that way has been absolutely getting clobbered. 
The Voyagers yesterday faced uh, Century College in the uh, winner's bracket game and lost by a final score of 4 to nothing. Century ended up scoring three unearned runs in the eighth inning to uh, seal the deal. Rainey struck out 14 times in the game and had just three hits. Uh, their pitcher uh, was doing very, very well. Uh, one each in those three hits, one each by Keanu Calamai and Andrew Black and Raheem Hassan. The Voyagers moved to the loser's bracket in the, in, for their game two yesterday, and they take on Northern Division rival Masabi Range. Rainey got single runs in the first, fifth, and eighth innings for a 3-1 to one win. Cody Carpenter went two for five at the plate and scored twice. Jerry Hernandez got the uh, win pitching seven strong innings, and then Brett Paul and Kenny Myrick came in, finished the deal. They gave up just one hit in the last two innings. So there's four teams remaining in the Region 13 tournament. That's what we've got going on. They're out of the eight teams that started. Rainey plays number one seed St. Cloud, who was knocked out of the winner's bracket yesterday. Those two teams play at 11 o'clock this morning. Of course, weather pending in an elimination game again at 11 o'clock. In other high school uh, scores from around the area, uh, teams trying to squeeze in their final regular season games uh, as the playoffs for softball start this next week. Baseball the following week after Memorial Day. Uh, yesterday in baseball, Deer River uh, gets a pair of wins. They defeat MIB 10 to nothing and then down Cherry 9 to 3. Esco defeats Carlton 15 to 7. Coke, Superior, Proctor, and Hibbing all took part in a wood bat tournament in Hibbing yesterday. Coke wins a pair. They defeat Proctor 5 to 2. They also uh, down Superior 4 to nothing. Hibbing downs Proctor 1 to nothing, and Superior edges Hibbing 3 to 2. In softball yesterday, Cloque got a couple of games in. They defeated Proctor 9 to 7, and Cloque got the better of Denfeld 6 to 1. Game that might uh, pit two of the maybe the top teams in the area. Definitely the, one of the top pitchers, Moose Lake Willow River, 10 cherry nothing. Uh, surprised to see the Tigers get shut out and uh, looks like they'll be the number one seed heading into the Section 7A tournament. But again, we got to wait until tomorrow to see how all those things pan out. The Minnesota Twins came from behind last night as Kenny Vargas hit a pinch hit two, uh, two run home run in the bottom of the ninth to tie it at three and then Jorge Polanco got the winning RBI with a sacrifice fly in the bottom of the tenth as the Twins won four to three. Robbie Grossman and Miguel Sano each had a pair of hits for the Twins. Two teams right back at it this afternoon. Of course, weather pending again. Pre-game at 12.40. First pitch at 110 on your home for the Minnesota Twins, K104. Last night in the NHL, the Pittsburgh Penguins even the Eastern Conference Finals at two games apiece with a 3-2 win over the Ottawa Senators. Game 5 will be tomorrow afternoon. Uh, today in the uh, NHL, uh, Nashville will be in Anaheim for a 6-15 game. That game will be played, I'm sure, NBC trying to play this up as much as possible. they got the Preakness State coming on the uh, post time, 548. So you get the horse race, you get the all the stuff, and then boom, you go right into the hockey game after they get done talking about stuff. And of course the Preakness Stakes, uh, can the uh, Triple Crown be done again this year? We'll see what happens. Last night in the NBA playoffs, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers absolutely demolished the Boston Celtics. It was 72-31 to at halftime and they win by 44 points by a final score of 130-87 to to take a 2-0 series lead. Speaking of 2-0 series leads, Golden State is in uh, San Antonio tonight at 8 o'clock. Uh, that game uh, also, or that series also has the Warriors up 2 to nothing. Of course, all the controversy this week with the Gopher softball team, with their getting shafted by the NCAA, taking a bad seed and all the rest of that stuff. They took some frustration out on Louisiana Tech pitching yesterday. Let's just be honest. Come out and they get three runs in the first, three runs in the second. They roll to an 11-3-5 inning win. They get to play host Alabama, the 16th seed overall at 130 in Alabama. Hot down there. They were talking that it was in the 90s with high humidity yesterday. It'll be interesting to see how uh, the Gophers battle against that and everything else that's going to go on there. That game's at 1.30 this afternoon in the winner's bracket. The Gopher baseball team uh, finished up their uh, series with Purdue. They moved uh, their games from Thursday, Friday, Saturday to Thursday and two games on Friday. Of course, you might have heard about the Gopher baseball game on Thursday night. The lights went out. Middle of the seventh inning, boom, the lights go out. So they ended up playing, finishing that game and playing two other games uh, yesterday. The Gophers did manage to win uh, game three of that uh, series 11-1 to after losing the first two games to Purdue. So the Gophers finished their regular season 33-19, and 15-8 and in the Big Ten, not too bad. And if, excuse me, if Michigan and Nebraska both lose today, 
the Gophers would be regular season Big Ten champions. What's going on locally today? Well, the, I mentioned the Rainy River uh, baseball team at 11 o'clock as they are in that Region 13 tournament. I mentioned that the Trap team will be down in Bemidji uh, competing down there. And then the Bronco Boys uh, baseball team, kind of a traditional tournament now. They've been going up to Ely and playing a couple games on this Saturday. They play Malacca at 2 o'clock and they play host Ely at 6.30. Of course, tomorrow things going on. The Twins will be on the air at 12.40. First pitch at 1.10. The Minnesota Loons will be uh, at home as they will take on Los Angeles at 4 o'clock. And also, if Rainy River wins twice today in baseball, they'll be playing again tomorrow for a possibility for a Region 13 championship and a trip to the national tournament. Other news from this week that I want to get out there. Uh, we've been talking about Wyatt Ulrich a lot. Uh, everybody here in town, if you're a baseball fan, Wyatt Ulrich, great honor. He ends up batting 500, nearly 500 for the season for St. John's. He was named Freshman of the Year in the MIAC, and he was also named League MVP as a freshman. Absolutely outstanding year for Wyatt Ulrich, and uh, uh, hopefully he can continue things along the way. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back, hopefully, with an interview with uh, Jordan Pearson. He's supposed to be here at 9.15, and I see it's very close to that. We'll take a break, and we'll come back with more Coach's Corner. Live from Hardy's on K104 and online at ksdmradio.com. Welcome back to Coach's Corner, and uh, we'll, 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 we'll shoot from the hip here a little bit, uh, see what we can make happen. Uh, my, my guest uh, not showing up this morning, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll play it by ear here a little bit. Let's talk a little bit more about the Region 13 uh, tournament. And uh, let, let's look at the winner's bracket. Uh, Riverland and uh, Century right now in that winner's bracket uh, that will be going on uh, this morning as well as they'll be, again, running through the raindrops in St. Cloud. Rainy River is taking on St. Cloud at 11 o'clock, that loser's bracket game. So those two teams, uh, those two games will be going on at 11 o'clock as they've got two fields side-by-side -side in St. Cloud that they can play those games. And then the winner of the rainy St. Cloud game will move on and get a chance to play the loser of that Riverland Century game. Of course, the loser of the rainy and St. Cloud game is eliminated from the tournament. So, obviously, uh, the Voyagers doing very, very well down there. Remember, last year they went in, I believe, as the number six seed and ended up getting to the final three teams. Right now, they need a one more win to get as far as they uh, did last year. And uh, this year, they went as, in as the number seven seed. So, uh, some good news there for the uh, Voyager uh, baseball team as uh, they continue play in the Region 13 tournament. Of course, uh, as we talked about uh, earlier, it uh, playoff time is coming up as the uh, softball will start on Tuesday. The Bronco, or excuse me, the uh, baseball will start the following Tuesday, May 30th, as things kind of get uh, crazy here with playoff time. It looks right now like the International Falls Broncos softball team will end up taking the number two seed in the playoffs with the win that Virginia got over the Broncos on Thursday here in the, in the Falls, a game that was heard on K104 and KSDM radio.com. Uh, Virginia looks like they closed the gap enough. They'll be within the tiebreaker, and that will put them uh, into uh, the number one seed. The Broncos will be the number two seed, and uh, I, I suppose I could try to speculate on who they might be playing, but that really does no good because they're at home at 4.30, and we'll have that game for you uh, on KGHS 12.30 a.m. and also on ksdmradio.com. Of course, the Little Fork Big Falls Viking uh, softball team will also start playoffs on Tuesday. It certainly looks like to me, and again, this is uh, uh, up in the air again until tomorrow morning, but it looks like to me with all the tiebreakers put into place that the Vikings will end up being the number five seed and they will be on the road at Deer River on Tuesday. We'll have that game for you. Preston Otterson will be down uh, on the road. He'll be traveling down, I believe, to Deer River to cover that game and that game will be available on K104. Uh, Looking forward to Wednesday, the uh, subsections for track get started. Obviously, that uh, is the step to make it to the next level, to make it to the section meet with that chance to make it to go to state. Uh, the Broncos are in that meet in Hibbing beginning at, I believe, at 10 a.m., I think, is the start time. I didn't double-check that this morning, but top seven individuals in each event, top four relays all advance to the subsection meet. So that's coming up on Wednesday. Thursday, if Bronco uh, softball and or Viking softball 
uh, advance. They will be uh, playing on Thursday. They'll end up having to definitely play two games on that uh, Thursday if they win on Tuesday. So we could have possibly four games on the air for you Thursday afternoon uh, with uh, Vikings softball and Bronco uh, softball. Uh, could be a very exciting time. And then uh, we move past that. You want to move to the following Tuesday, the 30th. Things get, get absolutely crazy because I firmly believe that the Bronco softball team has a very good chance uh, whether they come through undefeated with one loss, however it all works out, I think that the Broncos have a very good chance to be playing on May 30th, which is the Tuesday right after Memorial Day. The Vikings, hey, absolutely positively could be there. Uh, but also on Tuesday, we've got baseball playoffs starting for the Broncos and the Vikings. We also have uh, section golf starting on Tuesday the 30th, 30th excuse me for the girls and uh, it just continues to get crazier from there so the next couple of weeks will be awfully fun for me because there'll be so much to follow so many good things happening uh, it's it, it's it's that October madness that March madness you get it here at the springtime uh, obviously Big Ten baseball tournament coming up uh, starting on Wednesday. The softball continues this weekend with the Gophers uh, and, and hopefully their long run to the World Series. So, uh, and of course, we're not even talking about graduations. That, that's, that's, that's other stuff. We, 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 we don't have time to worry about those kinds of things because we've got sports to worry about. And, of course, if you're a hockey fan, the uh, Stanley Cup starts in, in uh, probably a week or just a little bit better than that. The NBA Finals will be coming up soon. So great time to be around and whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a break and we'll come back with uh, head coach Kevin Gordon who just stepped in we'll take a short break and we'll come back and we'll talk to him you're listening to Coach's Corner live from Hardy's on K104 and online at ksdmradio.com you guys ready? Yeah. well welcome back to Coach's Corner and uh, we're going to talk Broncos softball joined by head coach Kevin Gordon and the lone senior here you are, Casey. You're, you're here. Yeah. Have you done this before? Am I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I'm going through. Have I had you on before? Uh, I did it for donkey basketball. Once. Oh, that's right. <laughs> donkey basketball. I forgot all about that. Yeah. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> I, 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 I can't imagine maybe how some people felt. I know I was sitting in the stands that night. I was very frustrated, so I, I, I can't imagine where uh, those that competed were at. And uh, oh, yeah. let, let, Let's go back to yesterday. Coach, uh, you guys go down to Cook and uh, take care of business. I, I bounced back from uh, Thursday's loss with a nice 11 nothing win. Well, I think the kids uh, came out and, uh, you know, did the job defensively and offensively. I think we had... Uh, Five, six extra base hits. Uh, Coffee had a triple. I think there was four or four. five kids that had doubles. Yep. Um, we had a couple of free uh, passes to first base. Uh, pitching wasn't as good as it was on Thursday. But, um, you know, our kids went out and played defense, hit the ball, pitching was there, did all the right things to get ourselves ready for the tournament. So I was just going to ask, Casey, do you kind of feel like this was, after, after the loss on Thursday, this was a good step going forward and, and kind of rebounding and getting ready for Tuesday's playoff game? Yeah, I definitely think it's good to get a win in before we go have a playoff game because I think then we're, I think we're in a better mood after a win rather than a loss. Well, abs absolutely. And it's always a little more positive uh, way of thinking about things. And now we're, 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 we're we're joined by a tardy. Oh <laughs> Amber Teeland, and of course, you know the thing about the about this Amber is, do, do I have to bring up Thursday? Because everybody knows who was listening to the game. They know that you you, you left me hanging, right? I know you're you. I know you had excuse. I get a, I get it. We're, anyway, you're here. How did yesterday's game go? It went pretty well yesterday. It, it went pretty well yesterday. Well, that's good to hear. Uh, let, let, I want to go back, and I don't want to belabor the point on Virginia, but I want to ask one question about it, and I'll ask you first, Coach. Their pitcher, left-hander, uh, did you see something that she was doing that kept the Bronco hitters off balance? Was, it, was there something there that she did that makes you think going into the playoffs? Well, I think, one, it's good to see a pitcher that, when I talk about pitchers, and I, I feel our pitchers are good, I feel there's some teams that have good pitchers. Virginia is one of them, being a left-hander. 
And when, it, when you talk about a good pitcher, I'm not saying it's not something that our kids haven't seen before or can't hit. It's somebody that has good location, can pitch different speeds, has two or three different pitches to keep you off balance. And I think she did a good job of that. Normally she's a rise ball pitcher, didn't throw the rise ball till later in the game. We kind of worked the corners inside and out on us, which was a little bit different than last year, which is good because our kids saw her last year and it was a different game. And, you know, this year was a different game. Uh, well, we didn't bring our A game by any means, defensively or offensively, which is good because I think our kids can put this one behind them and we know we can play better than we did and uh, I think that will happen next time we play Virginia. Casey, what did you see at the plate with her? I, and, and like I said, I don't want to belabor the point, but it just seemed to me like there was there was something that she was doing and I, I couldn't pick up on it. So I guess I'm looking for first-hand experience of being at the plate. It, it, it just seemed like... Like Coach said, maybe it was just the location. What, what did you see? Yeah, I definitely struggle with like seeing the outside pitches and not swinging at them, and I think I saw a lot of that too. I, I would agree that the strike zone was maybe a little wider. A little? Oh, come on, Tim. You can do better than that. Yeah. I would say that you, you, there was probably six or eight inches on the outside That's corner. That's what I'm saying. It was bigger than 17 inches, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, you were you're, you're a lefty, you know, and I'm a I, I'm a left-handed batter too. So we we, we 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 do have that in common anyway. Going into this, <laughs> is it different? You guys don't see many left-handed pitchers. Is it is it is it tougher because you, you see mostly right-handers? And of course, there's the the thing lefty against lefty, blah blah blah. Is it is it a little more difficult, especially with with the slapping that you do in the the leadoff spot? I mean, the hands of the pitchers, like if they're right or left, doesn't really throw me off. But the lefty pitcher, she definitely was throwing me an inside curve it at me so it was really hard to get that pitch to because I, I yeah those inside pitches are hard to slap it off of because it's so close to your hands and you just can't get it down so then I just had to move up in the box more and just swing away let's talk about the curveball because you brought it up a little bit and again I'm not a, I'm not a fast pitch softball player I played baseball but talk about the curveball does the because it's underhand, I know when a curveball comes, you know, it has a little down in baseball. It has, what does the curveball do in softball? What, is, what does it do? You talked about curving at you. Is it still breaking down? I'll, I'll let them talk after I, huh? I'll give you an answer. The curveball basically is on the same plane. It comes in the batter the same plane as, you know, you're trying to move your bat. But it does break from, you know, it can be thrown at, like a, this left-handed pitcher would throw it at you and it would break over the plate. Or they can throw it down at the plate and have it break outside so you got to hit an outside pitch. That's a left-handed batter. So it's the opposite for a right-hand batter. Okay, they're th throwing the ball is coming into you. So it might look like, hey, that's on the outside of the plate and it breaks at the last minute. It depends on where her curve breaks. If it's late break or an early sure. break. So both of these players here saw the ball from both sides of the plate and, and it's different for both of them to try to learn how to attack that. You got a short time frame, but it's good that they saw that because I think that pays down the road when you when you see that that type of pitcher. Do you see a lot of pitchers throwing curveballs? That, that, that you're, Amber, you're shaking your head no. Uh, is, is, so is that something that, like Coach said, a good experience kind of getting you thinking that that's what she could do of course you know you talked about the fact that she didn't she throw, throws a lot of rise balls didn't throw that till late in the game and and, and i when i talked to their assistant coach she said she she likes to go up the ladder she's going to go high to try to get kids to chase that's where that's where she makes makes her hay and it, 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 it it's <laughs> something I, I think that's something that you got a chance to learn about this team now by the time you guys maybe meet way down the road I mean you guys could see that, that that's definitely an advantage right Casey yeah I mean I definitely think I laid off the high ones this time but yeah I really struggled with that outside corner the most I would say but Virginia ha had a very good day it looks like that they'll jump you guys and be the number one seed you guys will be the number two disappointed yeah. Yes, Amber. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Coach. You got to beat them all anyway. Got to beat them all yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I think you know whether you're one or two. Obviously, uh, you know sometimes you see the the number one team on the other side of the ledger, and you go, "Oh, we'd like to avoid them as long as we could," and and whatever. I, I, to me, the the talent that this team has, Coach. One, two, seven. I the, the, this team is is ready to roll. Do you do you feel the same way? Well, I, you know, I wasn't trying to be overconfident, saying that you have to beat them all. I think yeah. that our kids have the ability to play offense, defense, and we have solid pitching. 
you know, when you're solid in the middle with the catching and pitching, you give yourself an opportunity to advance in the playoffs. So uh, I don't think our kids really fear anybody. Um, it's just a matter of getting comfortable. And softball is a big, big deal is confidence. I don't care if it's pitching, if it's hitting. Uh, confidence is a, is a huge factor. So uh, these kids play pretty relaxed, pretty calm, and are confident against most of the teams that we play against. And I feel that they have an opportunity if they're bringing their A game to beat anybody. So I think that's something that we need to carry in the, into the playoffs. And I, and I feel, you know, when you're going through your regular season, you're going to have ups and downs, right? Yeah. And uh, some days you're going to hit the ball. Some days you're not. Some days you're going to leave a whole bunch on base. Sometimes it's hard to get on base. So, And the gloves maybe aren't there all the time. So it's spring sport. You don't get a lot of practice time. We know that. So, you know, it's tough. It seems like we're playing games every day. We're on the bus together. We're like a family. You know, it seems like we spend the entire week together. We talked about that earlier. So, you know, just kept trying to get our kids ready to, to go into the playoffs. We worked a lot of, on uh, hitting this year, and hopefully that'll that'll carry into the playoffs for our kids. Anybody uh, in the playoffs that you're interested in playing, Casey? Is there, somebody, is there a team out there that you'd like to say, I, I want to go play this team. It's a measuring stick for us to play that team and say if we can beat that team or they beat us, this is a te- this is a this is a good challenge for us, and it will tell us how good a team we are. Well, I just think coming back at like teams that we even lost to in the playoffs would be a big deal, like Nashville. I think that I think that was a game we definitely could have came a lot closer in, but yeah, I think that'd be one team for sure. Amber, how about you? You know, I don't know. I just think playing all these different teams that we normally don't play very often in playoffs, I think it's a fun experience just to see how different teams are and how much you have to change how you kind of, like, see the ball in different areas because everyone hits the ball every other way. So it's kind of a fun experience just to play against, like, other teams. Coach, you, I, I, you, we, we talked about the pitching. Obviously, pitching in softball is such a big deal. But you got you got to face a, a pretty good pitcher in the Nashua pitcher. You got to face Warren on Thursday against Virginia. You got to go to War Road. Is there somebody out there in the tournament that that is going to be other than, well, I'll top Bodie, I guess, is, is probably the number one uh, from Moose Lake, Willow River. Is there somebody else out there that I'm missing out there that you kind of got on the radar? You're going, this girl is, is comparable to the to these other girls from War Road that these girls have already faced. Well, I know, you know, Bodie from playoffs last year, she's a good pitcher. Um, we had, you know, trouble with her uh, both times we faced her, but... Uh, you know, I think our kids are better prepared this time. If that, you know, if that occasion, if it if it happens, um, Esco's got to have good pitching. You, you, with their record, there's, you know, you cannot just rely on defense. You have to have, you know, good pitching. Uh, Proctor had a good pitcher last year. I thought they had a. I can't remember the girl's name, uh, but she threw fairly well uh, against us. Uh, you know, a lot of it's like how you're swinging the bat, too, when you're going into the playoffs, you know. Um, I kind of like our team last year. We were a little young, really? I thought. Really? We're still young, we're but, still young, but we have experience. And some of the things that we had trouble with in the playoffs last year, we hit a lot of we drove a lot of balls up the middle. You know, we were putting the bat on the ball, dribbling. So we've been working a lot on inside out and trying to use the barrel more effectively in practice. We've done a lot of front toss this year, and the kids have really responded. There's games where we've just hit the ball solidly, and there's some games that we, you know that we played where we've hit the ball solidly and not been able to put up the runs. You just hit it at people. It just happens that you know to go there. So you know, I, I there's there's teams out there definitely that have some pitchers that we haven't seen, but you know that's what you want during your regular season to see some good pitchers and uh, see different things and um, hopefully that experience you know helps you when you get in the playoff. Casey Lone Sr. on the on the roster the, that, that, that's uh, out there on the field uh, what what do you take in going into the playoffs do, do you do you change do you do things differently because you're a senior or is it hey we've been playing softball together for years and years I don't feel like the senior in this group I don't feel like I need to do anything different I just need to go out and take care of business. No yeah I definitely feel like we're all so close that I don't feel like I'm any older than them and I don't you know I don't I don't know I just feel equal to everyone so um, I think one thing going into the playoffs is like we need to I think we always start off really slow when it comes to a game like we always have to like kick it into the gear or kick it into gear like the last couple of innings I think that's yeah. one of our bigger things too. But. Yeah we, we, we don't want to we don't want to be waiting around we want to get things going right yeah. away right Amber? Oh, well, not what it was that look for. What did I say? What did I say? We want to get things going early. You always I, well, pick it on me. How, I how felt it? that one. How, that was that, how, was that, how was that picking on you? I don't even know what I What did I do? Is that a chirp? That was a chirp. That was a chirp. You me. You burnt me, Gord. What did I do? What did I do? How was that chirping you? Because she's the lead off. She starts. Oh, because she's the lead. That... 
That's a pressure spot, but oh, yeah, she handles it. Uh, she it, handles it. It, it, it was not meant that anything about the leadoff spot. I, don't, I I just meant getting the first couple innings, getting things well, rocking and rolling and getting confidence. I think going. that's part of it, though. It's like you're the leadoff hitter, and then you feel like if you got a good pitch, and you go up there, and you're like, oh, I heard she's really good, and she's throwing curveballs, all these pitches, and you strike out. Then you got the leadoff hitter striking out, and then they're like, just mad. I'm like, wow, I striked out. Like, oh. Then everyone else is go up and they're like, oh, she struck out. Oh, whoa. And then, yeah, it's just a stressful spot. Well, one, one He's st- right, but. <laughs> well, one stat I found interesting, I was looking at your season stats before the Virginia game, and I, I found this, I, I guess I found it hard to believe that this team had struck out as a team in the first 14 or 13 games, excuse me, had struck out 45 times and had taken 44 walks. Is this team up there, are, are they a free swinging team? Because 45, 45 strikeouts in 13 games is only just over three. So, I mean, that's not a lot, but there's only 44 walks. Is this kind of the attitude of this team? Let, let's get up there and let's let's take our hacks. Amber shaking her head, coach. Yeah. Well, she's a leadoff. She's a, these girls on the front lineup. They're, they're getting their swings in. So yeah. there's nothing wrong with striking out. I, you know, no. I mean, some kids feel that they don't want to strike out. And if that's in your head, you're going to have difficulty. You got to get up there and hack at it, you know. And you try not to look on a third strike, but you have so many varying strike zones from umpires from well, game to game that you know you do get caught once in a while. But I, I if we're aggressive on the with the bats or on the bases, I'm all for it. I, I guess I think well, I was maybe talking more about not taking so many walks because 44 walks. I mean, that's only like I said three about three per game. Like I said, you guys aren't up there to look to, to take the free pass. You guys are up there to. Let, let's grip it and rip it, right, Casey? Well, I definitely think that, too, like, I don't want to get hit by the ball. I don't let the ball hit me. I jump out of the way so I can hit the ball next time because they've been so close, and I just want to, like, grip it out there. I just think it's, yeah, I definitely think we have the chance of hitting it better. So Absolutely. It is, is that kind of the – does that come from playing – and I, maybe I'm going the, out on the, in the left field with this a little bit, but from playing a lot of summer ball, Amber, does, does that come from getting in there and, and taking your cuts and, and, and swiping at the ball because you might as well get out there and take a swing at it rather than just taking the yeah. free pass? I mean, I don't. when I get out there, I'm like, you know, I'm going to hit this ball. Like, even if it's close to me, I'm going to go down swinging just because I, I'm not the per- I don't like to get walked. I just don't like those free bases for me because I just like to swing away and hit it because I feel like when I get a hold of the ball, I can really hit it out there if I have to, so... I just think it's it's, smart. The, it's the way to do it. Yeah, I was like, it's smart. Well, if you are in a base, I think it helps your confidence, yeah. right? If you're up there swinging away. And I'm going to tell you something about these kids is we have to kick them out of BP because they would sit and hit forever. I mean, so we got to go last one, and then, and then it's about three And then there's more, about ten then, more. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and, you know, so, hey, get out of here. we got to get moving. Yeah. We don't have two hours to do BP. Yep. But they would sit and hit all day. I, ha- I didn't look this morning. Did you look at the QRF this morning? If you guys are the number two seed, who's, who who's it look like the number seven is? I did not check it out. I checked it out. Um, I think Wasabi uh, East was eight, right? Wasabi East was eight, Marshall, and I think it was Evleth and then Marshall, but Evleth beat yep. Marshall. So they could, if the so tiebreaker works out. So it could be close. Marshall. I think, it's, I think Evleth is ahead of Marshall, and then um, Evleth did lose yesterday to Virginia. So... So. All right. Well, I wish you best of luck on Tuesday. I'll be there. I'll be looking forward to it and uh, getting things going. And uh, let's hope it's a long and fruitful run for the Broncos. Uh, I, I think it. I think it's time to go. I think it's time to be there, right, Coach? Absolutely. Thanks, Tim. Thank Kevin you. Gordon, Thank Amber T. Lander. Even though she's mad at me, and Casey might be joining <laughs> me here this morning. We'll take another break, and we'll come back from Hardy's. You're listening on K104 and online at KSDMRadio.com. Unreal. Welcome back to Coach's Corner for our final segment. Thanks to the uh, softball team for coming in this morning and uh, talking about the playoffs coming up. Let's uh, go back over the week that was. And uh, last week, uh, the Bronco Boys golf team uh, participated in day two uh, of their tournament down in uh, down at the quarry. I had to think for a second. The Broncos end up taking eighth out of 20 teams. Brady Wright was ninth as an individual and uh, for the two days the uh, Broncos were led by Brady Wright with a sh- score of 155, 173 for Josh Can, 171 for Ethan Allman, 180 for Mitchell Nemec and 182 for Sammy Maxwell. The Rainy River baseball team uh, last weekend they won their best of three series uh, with Vermillion 2-1 to one to advance to the Region 13 tournament that we were talking about. Game one saw Kevin Al- uh, Alicia scatter four hits. He struck out 
up 13 as the Voyagers won by a score of 3 to nothing. He was also 2 for 2 at the plate. Uh, Alicia is, is, is a heck of a ball player, and we'll talk more about his big day on Thursday in a few minutes. Game 2 was almost all Voyagers. They led 5 to nothing going into the 6th inning. Unfortunately, they let it slip away. Vermillion got 5 in the 6th, 1 in the 7th, as they won 6 to 5 in forced Game 3. And then back on uh, Sunday, the Voyagers built a big lead this time, 5-1 to one going into the seventh inning. Vermillion got three, but they couldn't get four. They left the uh, tying run on, and Rainy River won by a score of 5-4 to four to take the series on Sunday's game. Lloyd Vernatz, uh, Cody Carpenter, and... Andrew Black each had two hits. On Monday, the Bronco girls golf team won their meet at the quarry with a score of 361, getting the better of Everleth Gilbert at 369. Kenzie Wenberg shot an 86 for second place individually. That's probably the best, that's the good, some good news, but the better news is, and, and, and it made the news, uh, Channel 6, Channel 10, uh, scattered all over Facebook and the Twitter world, Morgan Rasmussen gets a hole-in-one on the par 4 10th, a 233-yard par 4. You know, they always say a good golf tournament needs to have a short par four, a drivable par four. It's exactly what Morgan Rasmussen did. It'll be something I'm sure the sophomore will never ever forget as uh, she got her first ever hole in one on that par four tenth at the quarry. The Bronco softball team on Monday went on the road. They 10 run Ely by a score of 12 to 1 in six innings. The Broncos opened up an 8 nothing lead after one and a half innings and absolutely cruised from there. Amber T. Lander and Janet Humbert each had four hits. Taylor Sears and Marissa Carey each had three. Mariah Leahy threw a one hitter with 13 strikeouts. Little Fork Baseball, Little Fork Big Falls Baseball, excuse me, lost to Cherry by a score of 7 to 1 on Monday. Brendan Williams was 2 for 4 with three stolen bases. The LBF softball team had a doubleheader with Black Duck. They won the first game by a score of 13 to nothing in five innings. Anna Imhoff throws a no hitter and uh, just lost the perfect game uh, by giving up one walk. Kate Knable had a couple of hits. Alexis Doucette had three hits with a double and a home run in game one. The Vikings come back and get the sweep with an 11-9 win in game two. Doucette had three hits again and Knable, Danny Erickson, and Kenzie Swenson each had a pair of hits for the Vikings in that game. On Tuesday with the rain, the only game that was able to be played was Little Fork Big Falls and what a big win they got on uh, Tuesday. They defeat Northland who was up in the QRF, like number 27 in the state, they win by 18 to by a score of 18 to two in five innings. Uh, Alexis Doucette and Kate Knable each had three hits. Unfortunately, they couldn't back it up on Wednesday. If they would have beat Ely on Wednesday, I firmly believe they would have had a home game. They'd have had a tiebreaker. They end up losing to Ely by a final score of seven to four. Kaylee Kennedy, Alexis Doucette, and Kate Knable each had two hits. That's why I believe that the Vikings will be on the road uh, coming up for the playoffs on Tuesday. On Wednesday, Little Fork uh, Big Falls baseball lost. To with Gilbert 10 to nothing. The Broncos softball team went down and played Masabi East in a torrential downpour. They get a 12 to 8 win as Amber T. Lander again had four hits, uh, added in three runs. Taylor Sears three for three with a home run and four RBIs. The girls track and or boys and girls track and field teams were down in Hibbing for the IRC meet. Grand Rapids wins the meet with 138, Hibbing 136, Everett Gilbert 112.5. The Bronco girls come in fourth with 103. Emma Gilbert came in first in the shot, second in the discus. Valandry Butler, second place in the long jump. Lexi Erickson got uh, second in the high jump. Claire Herzig took first place in the pole vault. All those individuals were I all IRC. Boys track, the boys came in six with 34 points. Grand Rapids dominated the meet with 213 and a half. Top place uh, finish for Wyatt Omdahl in the pole vault. Also on Wednesday in boys golf, the Broncos came in uh, tied for, excuse me, in second place with a 341 behind Hibbing's, th excuse me, 338 at the quarry. For the uh, Broncos, Brady Wright in 81, Josh Cannon in 82, and Josh Millette and Sammy Maxwell each shot 89s. The girls golf team was at the East Range Conference meet on Wednesday, and they are your tournament champions. They shoot a 362, 21 shots better than Eveleth Gilbert's 383. For the Broncos, Morgan Rasmussen shot in 88, Olivia Wright in 89, 92 for Olivia Besh, and 93 for Kenzie Wenberg. On Thursday, the Broncos softball team faced Virginia. We just got done talking about this. The Broncos drop a uh, game by the score of 8-3. to three. Marissa Carey was 3-4 for four at the plate. Big news from the Broncos baseball team. <clears throat> they trailed 10-1 to one going into the seventh inning. Matter of fact, Greenway had the bases loaded, nobody out in the bottom of the sixth, leading 10 
to one, could not get the game winning 10 run rule run in. The Broncos bounce back. They get 11 runs in the top of the seventh. That's the third time that the Broncos in eight days scored nine or more runs in an inning. They scored nine against Little Fork in an inning. They scored 10 against uh, Denfeld, and they score 11 against Greenway. Uh, just some phenomenally big innings for the Broncos. They went by a final score of 12 to 10. Simon Palm went for, uh, three for four at the plate, and Tyler Caulfield, Trimble Butler, and Garrett Koenig each had a pair of hits. The Little Fork baseball team down Kellier North Home 15 to four in five innings. The LBF softball team closed up their regular season with an 11-1 five inning win over MIB. The Vikings end their regular season with a very good 11 and eight record. In that game, Alexis Doucet and Katie Stavis Stavish, excuse me, each hit home runs. Also on Thursday, the Rainy River baseball team got a 3-2 win over Minnesota West in the opening round of the Double Elimination Region 13 tournament. I mentioned Kevin Alicia had Alicia, excuse me, had a big game last Saturday. How about this for a game in a region tournament? Strikes out 10 in six innings and then goes four for four at the plate for a big day. Yesterday, Rainy River splits two games. They uh, lose their first game in the winner's bracket by a score of four to nothing to uh, Century College. And then they come back and defeat Masabi Reigns by a score of three to one. So Rainy River playing in a loser's bracket an elimination game at 11 o'clock this morning in the region 13 tournament as they will be taking on the number one seed St. Cloud team. Of course, the big news uh, from yesterday uh, from Bronco Track and Field, Emma Gilbert absolutely shatters the school record in the shot put. Uh, it was at 43.5. It's now at 46 feet, four and a half inches. She nearly bested her, uh, her previous school record by three feet. Her uh, la second to last throw yesterday was 45 plus feet, and then she goes over 46 feet on her last throw of the day. Absolutely outstanding. Lexi Edwards and Claire Herzig go 1-2 in the pole vault. Wyatt Omdahl wins the uh, pole vault yesterday. Paige Wold second in the high jump. Jenna Sullivan second in the discus, and Taylor Bush was third. Bronco softball team finished their regular season 13-2 and yesterday with an 11-0 win over Northwoods. The Bronco Boys golf team took sixth yesterday uh, in a meet in Virginia. They shoot 324. Hermantown was the winner with 297. The girls golf team wrapped up the regular season title for the East Range Conference. So not only were they tournament champion, but they are regular season champions as they shot a 177 yesterday. Leading the Broncos was Morgan Rasmussen with a 43. Olivia Besh also shot a 43. <sighs> well, what's coming up next? Today, Rainy River Baseball at 11 o'clock. The Bronco Trap team is down in Bemidji as they uh, go on the road for one of their few meets on the road besides the uh, state tournament. The uh, Bronco Baseball team will be in Ely. They take on Malacca at 2 o'clock, Ely at 6.30. What's coming up uh, Coming up uh, for the rest of this week? We already talked about the playoffs, but we'll mention everything again. Monday, lone game uh, will be the Little Fork Big Falls Viking Baseball team. They'll be at Lake of the Woods on Monday. Tuesday, we'll have Viking softball on K104. We'll have Broncos softball in the playoffs on KGHS 12.30 a.m. And also don't forget on KSDMRadio.com. The girls golf team will be at Detroit Lakes on Tuesday. The Bronco baseball team will be home at a against Virginia. If you did not get the uh, change on that, the Broncos were supposed to play Virginia at home on Wednesday. That game is now moved to Tuesday and now the Broncos have a home game against Hermantown on Wednesday. Little Fork Big Falls Viking Boys uh, Baseball, they are in Carlton on Tuesday for a 2.30 game. On Wednesday, of course, the subsection track meet uh, coming up down in Hibbing starting at 10 o'clock. Mentioned the Bronco baseball team at home at 4.30, and the Bronco boys golf team will be at Cloquet for a 9 o'clock meet. Thursday, softball playoffs continue for the Broncos and the Vikings. If they win on Tuesday, we'll have all the coverage for you on K104 and uh, KSDMRadio.com and KGHS 12.30 a.m., depending upon how things go. No Twins game on Thursday, so we've got free reign, hopefully, of the stations. No action on Friday, and, of course, everybody's off for Memorial Day weekend. And uh, speaking of Memorial Day weekend, our final show here from Hardy's for the year is just uh, coming to a close. Uh, our show next week will be a tape version as uh, we'll get something in the can. The uh, Bron uh, K104 will be covering the Emo Walleye Classic next 
Friday afternoon and Saturday afternoon. So we've got things going on all over the place. So next week's Coach's Corner, we'll have uh, some interviews taped. We'll uh, get the sports out for you and get everything set up as we uh, prepare for that. But uh, uh, i got to take this opportunity to again thank Dave Peterson and his entire staff here at Hardy's for always taking care of our guests, whatever we need. If I've got to need something, uh, it's always done. I appreciate, uh, Dave, everything you do for uh, local sports and your support of uh, our Bronco and Viking teams. We could not do it without you. Uh, thanks to all our guests for an entire year. Uh, it's just uh, an amazing how we uh, continue to get uh, people here to uh, to come in and be interviewed and, and come in and talk about the sports that they love. Uh, want to thank the sponsors for allowing me to do this and uh, allowing K104 and KSDM Radio to do this. But most of all, thank you. We couldn't do it without you. People weren't listening. We wouldn't be able to do it. So I really thank you for listening and talking to me about what's going on with Coach's Corner. It, uh, it definitely makes it fun. Uh, thanks to Ryan back at the station for pushing all the buttons. You've been listening to Coach's Corner on K104 and online at KSDMRadio.com.